What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about walls in Revit. Well, we're going to make, be making it a little bit more interesting than that. So, uh, with the latest release of Revit, the, the one that was released in, uh, in 2020, this year, and the name of that is Revit 2021 for some reason. I'm just kidding, that's just how Revit does things. Uh, but anyways, uh, the new version of Revit includes slanted walls. So it includes the option for walls to make them well slanted, which is of course really useful because it uh, kind of saves you the time from having to create a workaround uh, for making something like that. So slanted walls are a new feature of Revit and in today's tutorial we're going to be exploring what does that actually allow us to do, what are some of the little tips and tricks and how how can we use that in order to get walls to look exactly how we want them to look. So that's the topic of today's tutorial. Now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I make useful Revit tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials and also I make some Revit courses. I make both beginner, intermediate as well as advanced level Revit courses. If you're interested in some of those check out my website balkanarctic.com. The link is going to be in the description just below the video. So so make sure to check it out. Also, if you would like to access some of my Revit project files, well, all of my Revit project files, over 400 files so far, uh, check out my Patreon page. That's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's get started by going here to models. And uh, this is, of course, Revit 2021. Uh, you have to have the latest version in order to do this. I'm just going to go here to new. And for the template file, I'm just going to choose the custom Balkan Architect template, the metric version. And if you're interested in getting my uh, template file, uh, my custom template file, both uh, the metric and the imperial version, you can find that on my website, balkanarchitect.com. The link is in the description. So I'm just going to OK here. That's going to open up the uh, open up a, a new project. And as soon as that is opened up, let's wait for a couple of seconds. We can get started. So the first thing that I would like to explore is the difference between slanted walls that are available with Revit 2021 and the slanted walls that were available before. Because slanted walls aren't really something that's new, uh, it was possible to achieve this effect and achieve a slanted wall in Revit. But uh, in the previous versions of uh, in previous versions of Revit, you would have to do this by creating a mass and then applying some walls on that mass. Now, there are some differences when it comes to creating slanted walls using mass or massing and creating them using the slanted wall tool. So let's explore those two. So the first thing that I'm just going to do real quick is open up a 3D view here and then let's go to massing inside. Let's go to show mass, in place mass, and I'm just going to create a quick mass so we can have a quick little demonstration. So let's have a rectangle such as that one. There we go. How large is that? Uh, let's make it a bit larger. There we go, perfect. Select that, create a form out of that. Let's make it a bit larger. And then let's have a few slanted walls here. So maybe this side and this side, perfect. And then we can create this and give it a different angle, perfect. Now I can just finish that mass and here we have a simple mass created. Now let's see the difference uh, when it comes to this or creating regular slanted walls. So with Revit 2021, what it allows you to do is to go here to the wall tool. Let's choose the generic 400 millimeter wall. Let's create a simple rectangle such as this one here. And then let's go into the 3D view and just see what are the differences between these two. So if I hover over one of these walls, hit the tab key, it's going to select the whole chain of walls. And now when I go here into the properties panel, uh, just on the bottom of the constraints, we have the cross section option and it's currently set to vertical. Now if you uh, switch that to slanted, it's going to give you another field just below that and it's going to say angle from vertical and it's currently just going to be showing uh, 0%. So if I just hover over this for a moment, it's going to show us kind of a little option for that. And what we can do now is add in a value. So if I type in 10 degrees, it's going to, well, add a 10 degrees slope 
to these walls and as you can see now they're slanted. Uh, now what's really good about this tool is the fact that the joint conditions between these walls here are perfect. So it's a really smooth just as if these walls were vertical everything is running really smoothly. And of course you can select one of the walls and then you can give it a negative so let's try minus 15. There we go so it works perfectly. Now let's say we want to do the same thing here with this mask. Well, we will go here to walls, we would use the pick face tool, and then we would pick this face, and then this face, and then this, and this. Now here in this case, the joint conditions seem to be working fine, but in a lot of cases, uh, Revit tends to mess that up and they don't look as good as they uh, as good as they should. Now, in this case, luckily, it looks uh, fairly okay, so uh, there is no problem with that. Now, when I select one of these slanted walls here, uh, you will notice that here, well, it shows that we have that slant. And whenever a parameter shows or appears here in the properties panel, uh, that means that that parameter can be added to a schedule uh, where maybe you want to schedule all of your walls. So if a slant or an angle of your slanted wall is something that's important and should be included in the schedule, you can do it by creating it like this. But if you create it like this, it's just not going to include that information. It just doesn't have that. So that's an important difference uh, to mention. Also, uh, an important difference is the relationship when it comes to the uh, slanted walls and floors and roofs. So let's just select this whole chain here and let's go to slanted and make it just simply vertical. Okay, so when you make this vertical and let's just select the whole chain and instead of uh, being four meters, let's put it to, I don't know, six meters, a bit higher, there we go. And I'm just going to switch here to level two and add a floor here in the center of this. So let's add a simple floor. We can use uh, pick walls and then you can just kind of place a floor like this. And also what I like to do with these floors is make sure that they're locked in place. So as you can see, I'm just moving this away and then when I move it back, it snaps and it gives me the little lock icon and then I can lock it in place on all sides. Hit finish. No, we don't want anything to attach. And now if we go into the 3D view, you can see that now we have a floor there. And if I decide to change any of these walls, as you can see, the, the floor will apply that change and it will follow that change. Now, uh, follow closely what happens if I select all of the walls and then give them a slant. So if I switch this to the slanted wall, there we go, give it a 10 degree slant. Well, this is what happens. The floor will kind of stick out. It's not going to follow that slant. It's still going to kind of be locked to that wall, which looks kind of silly like this, uh, but it's not going to follow the slant of the wall. So if you decide to use slanted walls with floors, it's just not going to follow this. Now, if you were uh, doing the same thing here with this mass, if we add a mass floor at level two, click OK, there we go, so we have a mass floor here, and if we add a floor to that, uh, oops, let's, yeah, the, we have to do that in massing, there we go, select that floor and create the floor there. Uh, whenever we select that entire mass and edit it, so let's say I want to edit this mass any way I want, finish mass, and then if I just select these two, let's see, update to face that will change and then also if I select the floor and use the update to face that will follow as well. So it's a bit easier when it comes to following the changes of the contour of the building when it comes to floors. It's a bit easier when working with mass floors and here you would have to make that change manually by going into edit boundary and then basically you would have to disconnect this to that locked uh, uh, option with the walls and then you would have to kind of rearrange it to the new position of uh, walls. Uh, now uh, let's just get rid of this floor and let's select all walls and let's go back to vertical. Okay the next thing that I want to mention is uh, by going here to level, ah, let's go to level two, <clears throat> go here and create a roof. So again I'm going to use pick walls Select all walls, 
and also I recommend that you uh, just uh, lock this in place on all sides. This is something that they do always when it comes to working on projects. It just makes sure that if you change the kind of the contour of the building, the and also we can just attach this roof. Uh, the roof will follow that. Now let's go to the 3D view. This is what we have. And now, as you probably know, if we change the building, the roof will follow that, which is really really useful. But what happens when we select just the walls? And again, I'm just hovering over one of the walls, hit the tab key once, it selects the whole chain of walls, and then you can go here to the cross section, and instead of vertical, let's change that into slanted, and let's give it a 10 degree slant, and this is what happens. So, again, the roof will not follow that change. Uh, now, what is fairly good about this is when I create a cross section here, and open that section. As you can see, the, the wall will attach to the roof. Uh, that's not a problem. It just doesn't follow the boundary of that roof. So it's a little bit annoying, but uh, if this is the shape that you're looking for, uh, yeah, even though the, the walls are slanted, they will still attach to that roof, which uh, let's be fair, it is kind of useful to have that uh, to have that option. Okay, now uh, let's move on and let's talk about the relationship between uh, slanted walls and doors and windows. That's really important as well. So here we have some slanted walls. Let's let's give this a little bit of an offset. So let's bring it a couple of meters up. Perfect. Okay, it looks like a weird mushroom. Anyways, uh, let's go here to Windows and let's use let's yeah let's use my custom PVC window here and here and so on. So with these windows, when you create a window and you can select one of these windows and keep in mind that these are old windows. So these I've created in Revit 2020 when the slanted option wasn't available. So it doesn't matter because even though these are families from previous versions of Revit, in Revit 2021 it is going to allow you to change that orientation from vertical into slanted and it is going to work with slanted walls. And as you can see this is what happens. It basically slants that window and it's following the angle of the wall. If I go into a level one, move the cross section a little bit. As you can see, now it's perfectly following the uh, the edge of the building. So you no longer have to use face-based wall uh, windows, which you had to use for these types of structures made from in-place massing. You can just simply place a, a single window and then slant that. Now the problem that occurs with both windows, but especially when you decide to place a door, for example, let's use this door. And I purposely used a door that has the option to open it up. This is my com uh, custom complex door family. And if I just change this to slanted, this is what happens. So this is usually not what you want to have uh, with your doors. So it even looks fairly okay in this particular situation. But let's see what happens if I go into level one and flip that around. Well, it looks like this. That if, if we had a floor there, this this wasn't gonna open. This this doesn't work. Uh, so this is an issue when it comes to slanted walls. It does allow you to place regular doors on this uh, on this wall and. Let's make it classical, just to be a little bit classy. There we go. So this is just included in the template. If you're looking for this, it's available on my website, balkanarctic.com. Uh, but anyways, uh, this doesn't work. So uh, the uh, my suggestion is when you're working with slanted walls and you want to place some doors on those, uh, please forget about these uh, regular doors if you don't have any uh, sliding doors loaded and that's okay you can go here into edit fam oops not edit family what am I doing uh, not edit family you go here to the architecture you can go to door load family and then uh, you can find the let's see English search for doors and here you we should have a sliding door. Uh, we should have more different ones. Let's see, do we have some residential sliding doors? Sliding, okay, maybe open this up. Choose a size, click OK. And then you can add these sliding door doors. So if I just 
align these as well and make them slanted as you can see it is going to work so uh, you can use the sliding door and it's not going to be a problem uh, when the sliding door opens it's going to look perfect but just uh, stay away from the irregular doors on slanted uh, walls because it's well it's just simply uh, it's simply wrong okay so that's pretty much it for slanted walls in Revit uh, please tell me in the comments below are there is there any other functionality of the slanted wall that you find interesting and that you would like to mention maybe something that's annoying to you or maybe something that's really cool for you uh, so please tell me in the comment section below thank you for watching this video if you're interested in more advanced content check out my website balkanarctic.com there i have many many courses for different levels of knowledge also on my patreon i have some of those courses as well as all of my revit project files over 400 files so far so if you're interested check that out okay so that's pretty much it thank you for watching and i'll see you with another tutorial in the next few days thank you for watching and have a nice day